sin. 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 When I look back upon my life, it's always with a sense of shame. I've always been the one to blame For everything I long to do No matter when or where or who Has one thing in common too It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sin it's a sin Everything I've ever done Everything I ever do Every place I've ever been Everywhere I'm going to It's a sin At school they taught me how to be So pure in thought and word and deed They didn't quite succeed For everything I long to do No matter when or where or who Has a thing in common too It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sin It's a sin Everything I've ever done Everything I ever do Every place I've ever been Everywhere I'm going to Everything I've ever done Everything I ever do Every place I've ever been Everywhere I'm going to It's a sin We are obsessed with sin. We have lists of sin, the seven deadly sins, pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth, a list developed to warn monks by Ponticus as the eight tempting thoughts in 375, translated a couple years later by his student Cassian, lauded then by Pope Gregory the Great around 600, then renamed and edited down to the seven deadly sins by Thomas Aquinas, and I am falling asleep. Sorry. But hey, aside from lists, we've created something else. It's called original sin. You know, because Adam and Eve bit the apple, which was never actually called an apple, but don't get me started. But hey, it's original, okay? Like KFC original recipe. It's the first one. The one everything builds off of. Even though if your dad is a murderer, you aren't born a murderer, right? Even though original sin comes from a Jewish story and Judaism does not believe in original sin, even though the Orthodox Church says, where did you get that idea? Well, not from Jesus. We actually got it from Augustine though some argue about that. Augustine, who said Eve ate the apple and now we've all got the disease. Really? Well, regardless, we are obsessed with sin. And yeah, we do it. We sin all the time. When Luther translated the scriptures and the Anabaptist churches, you know, the ones all around us that practice adult baptism started popping up saying, you need to make a decision for Jesus or your baptism isn't any good. You know what Luther said? It was actually pretty wise. Most of what Luther said about Anabaptists needs to be buried in a hole somewhere. But this was pretty wise. And he said, sin influences every human decision. Okay, young one, why do you want to be baptized? You accepted Jesus. That is great. But are there other reasons? Oh, sure, which Jesus is 90% of it, but could it also be you want to be part of the real friend group, the club here at youth group? 
You heard there's a party after you get baptized? Maybe presents? You're afraid you'll go to hell if you don't? Maybe it's that cute girl in Bible class. Or maybe you just want people to stop asking, hey, when's it gonna happen? Or maybe you want your parents or you to be proud. Pride, that sounds deadly. All those reasons, sin. All those reasons taint the decision, your decision for Jesus. So Luther said, do not complain about infant baptism because the only one who is pure at a baptism is the one who's doing it and that is not the pastor, that is Christ. And if Christ is the actor, bring on the babies. Oh, wow, we're at it. Why did I want to be a pastor? <laughs> you get that, asked that question a lot in the process, the journey to become a pastor. You get asked by big groups of some somewhat intimidating people. I mean, hey, these people make the decision regarding whether or not you can go to eight years of higher education, work long hours, and come out making less than the average first-year teacher in Pennsylvania. And the answer they're looking for, I feel called by God and the community to preach the word and distribute the sacraments. Let me tell you something. I worked as a layperson for the church for 10 years before I became a pastor. You know why I became a pastor? Because I could not support my family and work for Jesus and the church otherwise. They paid lay people even less. Sure, the other parts were great, but come on, back then, there were no other options. You'd better be a pastor. So hey, candidacy committee, if you want me, come get me. Actually, I did tell them the truth. Surprising what you can get away with when you make people around you feel guilty by telling the truth. But wasn't that sin? Wasn't my reasoning sin? Oh, yeah. Everything I've ever done, everything I ever do, it's a sin. And we are kind of obsessed with it. So what do we do with it? Live our lives buried in constant guilt, plead for constant forgiveness, do what so many people do. Maybe most of us just give up, ignore it, maybe even leave church. What do we do? Well, first, I think we need to be honest. I do not believe in original sin. I am with Judaism and the Orthodox on this one. Yes, of course, sin is part of life. But human beings have not been stamped, in my opinion, evil because of Adam and Eve. The church got along just fine without original sin for its first 400 years or so. Next, any action can create evil. Thich Nhat Khan said his greatest regret in life is that we must consume each other to survive. He was a vegetarian. But he believed even his broccoli was a sentient being, and he knew that to live, he had to kill. We have to realize sin is a condition, and not just a human condition, I think, a condition of life. And that sometimes it's beyond our control, and sometimes it's not, and we do need forgiveness for it. And we need to accept forgiveness and give ourselves a break. And most of all, and yes, this is me now, we need to stop using sin or what we perceive to be sin as a weapon. As Christians, we receive forgiveness, but we do not get with that the license to whack those we disagree with or whose state of forgiveness we might question or who we might not understand or who might scare us. We do not get to whack them with our Jesus stick, nor do we get to make them be just like us. It's hard to be an addict. You feel betrayed by your body, foiled by your own mind. 
You tell yourself it's a disease because it is. But there's always some Christian out there telling you it would go away if you just believed harder. It's hard to be mentally ill. You feel betrayed by your body, foiled by your own mind. You tell yourself it's a disease because it is. But there's always some Christian out there saying it would go away if you just believed harder. It's hard to be a person who's not a cis, straight person, especially when there's always some Christian. It's hard to be judged for not having anything when you've really tried and life has only thrown you curveballs. It is hard to be part of a church that says you need to believe exactly this and you don't. These things, these thoughts, these conditions, and so many more, even as some of them are just how a person is born, even as much of it comes from factors beyond our control, are a call to some Christians to bring out the Jesus stick and the whacking begins. Even as the whackers cry, this is because we love you and want you to be better. My friends, when we do the, this, and yeah, I've done this, the people we are whacking would prefer we keep our love to ourselves. And I've been whacked. Maybe you have been whacked too. And I could have done without that love. What do we do with sin? Well, we cannot make it a weapon. Because when we do, we are punishing those who've sometimes done nothing wrong, or who are just people we don't like, or don't understand, or who are simply living life with the cards they have been dealt. Because when we do, we are very forgetful of a Savior who is constantly saying, Do not judge, and only God is good. Because when we do, we play God. And maybe that's all the sins rolled into one. The classic and very useful definition of sin is this. Anything that separates us from God. I promise you, making what we perceive as sin into a weapon puts a wall between God and us. A wall in the end that only the grace of God can scale. I grew up in a very conservative church. Sin was used as a weapon on me. The pet shop boys wrote it's a sin quickly and out of frustration with Catholic school. They meant it as a joke. And if you grew up like we did, you can't help but smile when you hear it. But something deeper is here. Anger. Frustration. An attempt to hit back at those who said they would never be good enough instead of just telling them God loves you. Sin is here. It's not going anywhere. But children of God, we are children of God. And God's love will always win. And that love is also in us. God is love. And we carry that light and love in us. We are born with that. Not with apple skin in our teeth. Metaphorical apple. Metaphorical teeth, of course. Put down the Jesus stick. Don't use it on others. Don't use it on you. If you want to love the sinner, start at home with yourself and then just love. Do that and you will lose any worry about your own sin. The stick will vanish and Jesus will be there.